in physical education, let's start thinking about deep learning, wide variety. So how can we not just do the repetition of traditional games and sports? How might we speak to students that might want to do poi or hula hooping or something quite different? so that we might have more opportunities to reach more students. And lastly, the whole person. So that right in the definition means that it's not just the outer mechanics of the body, but how we feel, how we fit in the world. The strongest connection then, in terms of understanding physical literacy in this model, is that it's linked to fundamentals. So that it's gone from um, an existential concept to a stage in a linear model of development. So in equating physical literacy as a discrete stage of development in a long-term athlete development model, we are shifting away from understanding physical literacy as a cradle to grave phenomena, as exposed by Whitehead. Rather, we are taking an existential concept and mechanizing it so that it may fit within the dominant paradigm we know so well. If we truly understand Whitehead's conception of physical literacy, however, it is nowhere near that of a stage in a linear model. It is a construct of continual becoming. Teachers have a tall order then, as their goal is to teach in such a way that their students have the motivation, competence, and confidence to be active long after they leave school. Also, we need to provide opportunities for students to awaken their imagination, to become curious about their bodies and movement, and most importantly, to experience a sense of joy and meaning so that movement is not perceived as a burden, a punishment, or drudgery, but rather something quite profound. A walk down the street, for example, could be so much more than a means and utilitarian activity. Now, um, I had some research questions. And research questions are there to guide the inquiry. So as a phenomenological observer of movement, I'm not just going to stare at someone and say, oh, you're climbing. That's fabulous. Um, what, what these lenses offer is a way of observing movement, a way of deepening that engagement. So you can start to see it through the lenses of function. What, what, are, the, what are the fundamental movements in terms of reaching and stretching, pressing with toes? Um, what are the forms that emerge? In closing, as we see how climbers may take on different forms, experience different feelings, and experience flow in imaginative ways, I hope that you are also open to perhaps the divergent possibilities each step, reach, or stretch has to offer. So the next time you wish to close yourself off from your movement experience by watching a screen or distracting yourself via other means, perhaps even if just for one moment, attend to your thoughts, sensations, and feelings of connection so that you might feel more invigorated and more alive than dead. For if we become open to fully experience movement from its basic functions, various forms, feelings, and flows, we might begin to sense that movement is not something we do. It is who we are, as so eloquently explained by Tim Ingold. <laughs>